here's all the things that are synced with iCloud, but desktop and documents folder is currently not. So I'm gonna choose this and now boom, all of my files just showed up. And this is one of the lightest, highest performance computers currently made in the world. There is no hyper threading. It's a different system where you've got four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. This brown box has one of the most exciting tech products in it that I've encountered in quite some time. This is the brand new Apple M1 MacBook Air. Check out how Apple this packaging is. This is the brown box that UPS just delivered. And when you open it up, it even, it even kind of raises the MacBook out for you. Simplified packaging out of the way. And here we go. This is the new 2020 Apple MacBook Air with the M1 silicon. Here we can see that I got the base model. This is the eight core CPU, seven core GPU, eight gigabyte of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD. The packaging and design aesthetic of the MacBook Air is completely unchanged. It looks exactly the same as any Intel version. What is changed is all of the inside guts. So let's open this up and see what the performance is like on the new M1 MacBook Air. The last MacBook Air that I tried was the new 2018 of this design and I did end up returning it because I just found that the performance for the money was not there. They put in a Intel Y series CPU that was really underpowered. I ended up getting a used 2015 MacBook Pro that I've been using ever since. So for the past year and a half maybe I've been using a MacBook Pro 2015 15 inch and that's been running well. But this new MacBook Air should be 300% faster and two times more efficient. So that's a three times increase in productivity performance and two times longer battery life than my current MacBook Pro. I did buy it in the silver color and you can get it in space gray, silver, or gold. And I chose silver because most of the time I end up putting a, uh, a matte black case over top, a hard case. So I will be doing the same and I do prefer having the inside look be the bright silver on the black keys. And the only reason why I'm not pulling this off and opening it up right now is it's extremely cold. It just came off the UPS truck and it's very cold. So I'm going to let it warm up to ambient room temperature first. But inside the box, very simply, you get a USB-C to USB-C cable. You get some documentation. And one of the differences of the MacBook Air is you do get a smaller brick. This one is a 30 watt USB power delivery charger, so it is a smaller unit. And Apple has gone to a uh, more eco style packaging for all of this stuff, so I'm going to be hard pressed to open this up without ripping it. It's almost impossible to get these things out without ripping them now because they're paper based instead of plastic based. So yeah, it is a much smaller power brick than my MacBook Pro, but it's also only 30 watts. A little bit of a longer charge cycle, but I also don't expect to have to charge this up every day like I have to on my MacBook Pro. One thing about these coiled up USB cables, once you get it out of this little protective sheath, you will never get it collapsed that small again. Thing, get rid of the cardboard, and that's your charge cable. So you can use it for data as well as power. Okay, I've waited about a half an hour. I'm just impatient. It's still a little cold to the touch, but it's not stupid cold. So I'm gonna just start with the unraveling. I'll get this computer out of its protective cover. Try and keep it nice. I don't know why. I don't know why I try and keep that nice, but I always do. I heard one of the new things about the new M1s is the chime is back. It is. And just like that, the new M1 MacBook Air is up and running, ready for initial setup. To use English as the main language, press the return key. So I'm just gonna choose my region. So I just hit English and I'm gonna choose Canada as my region. One of the new things with the 2020 MacBook Air is that the keyboard has gone back to the scissor switch mechanism. So it should be a much more reliable keyboard than the old butterfly mechanism. And as well as they have changed the function key rows as well so that some of the buttons do different things. But overall, you get a much better keyboard. You're getting a P1 color gamut screen 
and you're getting Mac OS Big Sur on the Apple Silicon. So it should be noticeably better performance by everything. Notice Big Sur now has accessibility options right up front. We don't need to choose any of that. So I'm just gonna say right not now. I'm going to connect to my home Wi-Fi network. Okay, continuing on through the Big Sur setup. Next thing is data and privacy. It's just telling me that it's going to try and protect me. Migration assistant for transferring information. I'm just gonna sync it to my iCloud account. Here we go. Now I'll be able to sync it with my iCloud. I will set this up as my main computer. I'm gonna put in my Apple ID and password and I'll come back when that's set up. Now this is my one-time Apple ID verification code. This is a one-time sensitive code. You get it paired, if you have two-factor authentication, you get it paired to your, uh, to your iOS device just to make sure as this is now going to lock this machine to my account. So even if this machine gets stolen, it will now be locked to my account. So it becomes useless to a thief. Now I'm going to set up my own account because you do have to give this a password and then I will be able to pair it with Touch ID as well because that's one nice thing about the uh, MacBook Air is that you get a Touch ID sensor right here. This is now syncing my computer with the iCloud system which will bring in all of my files that are in the sync and it should also have all of the apps that I've purchased through the App Store available to me to download as well. Now, one thing that I did do, which is a little bit of a gray area thing, is that I did purchase this through Apple directly for their educational discount because I'm gonna use this to teach myself Final Cut Pro. So I purchased this with educational discount as well as I purchased the Pro apps for education. So that's gonna move me up to Final Cut Pro and I'm eventually going to transition my video editing from iMovie to Final Cut as I teach myself how to use it. The Find My, so if the device becomes lost, stolen, I can remotely track it, erase it. Now this is interesting. So the actual analytics is set to not share apps with developers, but it's, not, it's no longer giving me the option to not send analytics to Apple. That used to be an option. That is one of the downsides to going up to Big Sur, is that the analytics data is constantly flowing to Apple. But as of right now, all analytics data gets sent to Apple of when you open an app and if there's any problems with opening an app. Here is an important one if you care about security. As mentioned, by default, you send all analytics back to Apple. There is a way to get around it. Go to Security and Privacy. Go to the Privacy tab. Scroll down to the bottom. Under App Advertising, you can turn off personalized ads as I've done, but go to Analytics and Improvements. Click the lock, unlock your security preferences, and uncheck Share Mac Analytics. By default, this is enabled. So this is what you used to be able to deselect when you initially set up the computer. They've taken that option away, and now it's buried in here. So now I've taken that out. I've Now I'm no longer sending my analytics back to Apple with every app that I open. I'm going to disable the Siri activation just because I don't need this monitoring for that key phrase. Now default is to have full disk encryption enabled, which I'm not sure that I want, but let me think about this one for a minute and then I'll decide. I'm going to continue with the enabled by default. It is an extra security feature where if this machine gets stolen, they cannot get at my private data that's stuck on the hard drive. Now we're going to set up Touch ID. So we're going to place my main finger over the Touch ID area and just register this finger to be able to log me in. Although if you have an Apple Watch, Apple Watch can be set up to unlock your Mac so that you don't even have to put your finger on the Touch ID sensor. But if you are a person who does not have an Apple Watch, having this Touch ID is very nice, as well as it works with Apple Pay as well so that you can pay for things with your finger. I've just gone through the Apple Pay setup and now we're on True Tone Display. This is just displaying the difference. So this is with True Tone on, that's with True Tone off, showing that it really cools the display with it off, but there's no way to toggle it here. So if you are the person that likes to do video or, or photo editing, you likely don't want to have True Tone Display on because then it's constantly changing the color temperature based on the room lighting. So it's something you can go into the settings and remove later. So one of the benefits of the new M1 MacBook Air is that the color is now P3 color gamut as well as it gets super bright. The display goes up to 400 nits of brightness now versus I believe the old one was 300. And now I'm just going to go through some of the setup options. So I'm going to go into system preferences and set up the things that I like to do to any new Mac computer. Okay, so I'm in the setup screen for Mac OS Big Sur. First thing I'm going to do is go down to displays and I'm going to change my scaling resolution to maximum. I like to have the maximum amount of usable space. So the default is to have it default for display, which it doesn't tell you what it is. So I'm going to go to scaled and I'm going to choose more space. I always prefer to have the most 
available space available on the screen. So I'm doing that. And this is where you can also toggle on or off True Tone. I'm gonna to leave True Tone on for a little bit and to see if I like it. Also, show display mirroring options in the menu bar when available. I'm going to turn that off as just that's a prefer preference of mine where I don't necessarily want that. I'll go into the settings if I want to share a screen. Next thing is to go into menu and dock bar. This is something that I always do is I don't like how uh, when you have the default behavior in Mac OS is that the dock is always showing and the dock is a physical barrier that you cannot use. It's usable screen real estate that you're losing. So I like to always go into the settings and change that so that it will minimize the dock, automatically hide and show the dock. So now I can actually get that vertical real estate back for my windows. So I can now use the full real estate and then if I want the dock, all I'd have to do is move the mouse down to the bottom of the screen and I can get my dock available to me. That's a personal preference thing. I notice a lot of people don't do that, but I always do. Then you can change how much you want your dock, where you want it positioned, if you want the zoom effect, things of that nature. I'm going to leave all that by default. I'm going to see what my battery settings are. This is interesting. It gives me a battery stats. It came out of the box at... 80, probably 90% charge, which is a high charge level. I'm surprised it came full that charge, but it did. And then here's the new command center in Big Sur. This is why people were thinking these were gonna to become touch displays. Apple said that they don't intend to do that. This was just for a design aesthetic. I don't know if I believe them or not, but it seems like this is going to be very much easily touch controllable at some point, but this is not a touch screen. Why does it show my displays at full bright? That was a bug. It wasn't at full brightness, but it showed it at full brightness. That was a bug already. All right, one of the things I do want to do is check for updates because this machine uh, probably came at iOS 11 and there's already 11.0.1 or more now. So I'm going to do immediately before I get too far along, I'm going to do this update to macOS Big Sur 11.0.1, motion control center, motion supplemental. This adds a bunch of stuff, three gigabyte update. And it's somewhat interesting that by default, they do not set your Apple ID to sync your desktop anymore. So now you have to go into iCloud Drive, click on options, and these are all here's all the things that are synced with iCloud, but desktop and documents folder is currently not. So I'm going to choose this, and now boom, all of my files just showed up. Now we'll go back because I do use my desktop for syncing files and screenshots over. That's kind of a YouTuber thing. It's messy, I know but it is. So that's how you get all of your iCloud sync devices from one computer to another to show up on your desktop. Also for being a marquee feature of the iOS version a couple of releases ago, for some reason they have stacks disabled by default. So just right click on the desktop or use two fingers on the touchpad and choose use stacks and then everything will be organized. So then that allows me to get at all my screenshots, get at my PDF documents, get at my images, just that easily. The other thing I want to do is change the touchpad behavior. So I'm going to go into trackpad and I'm going to turn on the tap to click because one thing I do not like about Apple's system is that uh, by default you have to physically click down in order to get a tap going. So I just always choose this, which is tap to click. I'm just used to that. It's something that I really like. Oh, silent clicking is back. They took that away a little while ago. It didn't. It's there, but it doesn't really work newest version of a new operating system. So anyway, okay. Now here's an interesting one. I went to the app store to try and download Final Cut and because I purchased this directly from Apple with the Pro Apps bundle, it was already here, already pre-installed. So I have Final Cut Pro, Compressor, Motion, and Logic Pro already installed and working. That is epic. Loving that. So now I can learn how to use Final Cut Pro. So everything was already here. The only thing I'm doing is I'm downloading an OS update, but I could have taken this thing and gone from taking it out of the box to starting my work within two minutes. So the dock, which is something that I find to be somewhat personal preference and muscle memory on where you place your icons, that is not synced through iCloud, which I find is a little bit of an oddity thing. Uh, I would have liked if you could sync your iCloud setup, your dock setup between accounts and computers, but that's something that Mac just doesn't do yet. Now, one of the very first things I do with any computer is I download Chrome. So they should have just recently made the uh, updated for Apple Silicon version. So I'm going to download Chrome and here's the option. Here's the prompt right here. So Mac with Intel or Mac with Apple. So I get to now choose Mac with Apple. That will give me the optimized version to run on this computer. 
Even though we're in a brand new version of Mac OS 11, the Finder still has that same sort of default tagging system enabled that I don't really like. I'm not sure why they think people use that. I have never used that in years, so I don't like having this taken up on my side view. So I'm going to go into Finder and Preferences. I'm gonna remove all the tags from the sidebar because I never tag anything but I'm going to add in things like movies, music, pictures, my home folder. I do like to have all that stuff, including the main computer location. So I turn on everything on sidebar, I turn off all tags. I don't like the default setup of Finder and I don't like the default setup of the dock, so I change both of those on any new Mac that I get. Here's the first application that I've run into that requires the translation layer. So we're going to install Rosetta to be able to convert the Blackmagic speed test from Intel code to ARM code. This is a translation matrix system that surprisingly does not come pre-installed on these M1 Macs. It was very quick. So now we get to install it and run it. Okay, this is the first application I'm running through the Intel to ARM translation layer called Rosetta. I'm going to start my disk speed test now. Wow, so we're getting a write speed of 2,500, 2,200, read speeds of almost two, over 2,000, again, 2,200. Those are blazing fast drives. This is, again, the base model, 256 gigabyte SSD, and I'm getting over 2,000 megabytes per second read and write. Megabytes per second read and write. That's fantastic. That may be why you want to buy extra storage built into the Mac, but in my personal opinion, I prefer to just run external drives. So I'll have my super fast OS drive, and I will run an external 512 or one terabyte SSD for all of my media. Now I'm extracting and going to install the Google Chrome for Apple Silicon version that I downloaded earlier. Also, all the sound effects are now different in Big Sur as well. All of the sounds are different than what you're used to. So now I'll go to my launch pad and I will open up Chrome and I will set Chrome to sync with my account. Now, why does Chrome want to use Bluetooth? I'm going to say no to that. Chrome is up and running and my account is set up. I just wanted to just quickly test the speakers too. The speakers seem to be much improved as well. Multitasking RAM stress test comparing an 8 gigabyte M1 MacBook Pro to a 16 gigabyte version. Now yesterday Vadim did an excellent video looking at the performance applications. 8 gig versus 16 Sounds very crisp, very good. So I've just opened up the activity monitor and one thing we can see here is that I do have eight gigabytes of physical RAM. The system is currently using 5.96 gigabytes. App memory is 3.29, wired memory, uh, compressed memory, cached files, and it is using swap. So there, it has already used 851 megabytes of swap. But because the SSD is so fast in this, that's why I don't think it's a big deal because you have eight gigs of physical memory, you have 256 gigs of super fast storage memory, you can swap data in and out, as well as this unified memory is extremely fast for being RAM directly soldered onto the CPU die. We get performance here out of eight gigabytes of RAM that we've never had before, and I think it's gonna be quite impressive. Everything has been running buttery smooth so far. I do wanna do a Cinebench test soon here. Cinebench is now in the Mac App Store, so I'm just going to download it directly from the App Store. So to using the website, then it has a little bit more security options. It'll also get automatic updates through the App Store, so we'll do it that way. And I'll test this as soon as it's done downloading. While that's downloading, I thought I would just show you some of the physical dimensions of this computer. It has not changed over the old Intel style. So it's got the wedge on the very front. It's the exact same looking computer on the outside. Everything's changed on the inside. The function row has changed. Some of these functions in the middle are slightly different than they used to be. So for example, this dictation key is new. Still get a force touch trackpad, a fairly large one for a 13 inch computer. And this is one of the lightest, highest performance computers currently made in the world. It is completely fanless. It is cool to the touch. There's almost no downsides to this other than you only have two IO ports, USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, USB 4.0. You have two of them. One of them is for power. The other one is for data where you can mix and match. You do also retain one headphone jack on this side. Been using it for over an hour already and we're still at 80% battery life. We started at 87. I've only lost 7% in doing a full setup, fairly intensive setup. Looking forward to it. This is the silver. You can get it in space gray or the gold. I actually do quite like the gold. I was just afraid that I would grow sick of it. It's uh, 
It's a pretty bold choice, the gold, and I'm not sure that I would like it long term. The silver, always a beautiful choice. I like the high contrast of the black keys against the silver finish. I actually prefer this over the space gray. Here we go, eight cores at 3.2 gigahertz. Let's see what this Apple M1 chip can do. Again, totally fanless machine, so it's gonna be 100% silent all the time. That is a huge deal. It's not even warm, which is crazy. This processor was built on a five nanometer production, so that is one of the tightest tolerances made in 2020. Even the current x86 chips are only hitting 7 nanometer by AMD and Intel has been stuck at 14 nanometer for the past six years, which is part of the reason why Apple decided to transition off of Intel and design their own processors. Oh, why is it running multiple times? I don't want it to run multiple times. Okay, so this is a new Cinebench thing, but you have to go into uh, you have to go into File Advanced Benchmark that gives you a minimum duration test, and the default right now is 10 minutes to test throttling. So I'm going to turn that off because I just want to get the score. So I'm going to continue a one run, get the score. Now, out of the eight cores that are fully active, there is no hyper threading. It's a different system where you've got four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. Now they're going to combine workload here, but you don't really know what processor is doing what. So we just combine score, multi-core score using all eight CPUs. And there's my score, 7,179 points, which is not necessarily the greatest score versus some of the other benchmarks I've seen, but being over 7,000 is a huge deal. The old computers, they would get a quarter of that performance and this machine is still doing background tasks. So I have no complaints at that score. That is an excellent score. My overall impression of the new M1 MacBook Air is it is everything that they've said it would be. I didn't have any kind of compatibility issues with anything yet. I was kind of curious if things like my printer would just work. So it did show up in the app list under, oh, it just disappeared. I have an AirPlay printer, AirPrint printer. So I'm going to add this as my default printer. See if this works. And it did. Just like that. So printer drivers work on Apple Silicon. So I'm gonna keep working on this machine. I will say that if you have any mission critical Windows based applications or Intel CPU based applications that you absolutely have to have working on your work computer, don't upgrade to these newest processor machines yet because there will be some bumps in the road, but it's been pretty smooth so far. Uh, there are some things like I'm wondering, will my printer work? Uh, will some of my peripherals work? So I'm going to do some long-term testing on this machine, which I will put those videos on the new NetCruiser tech channel. So the in-depth tech videos about testing this machine out, I'll put on the tech channel. This initial one is just to show that I got this machine and this is in my new daily driver video editing rig. So I'm also gonna teach myself how to use Final Cut. So we'll see if we can get some additional new type of transitions and fancier effects in my videos, okay. as well as I'll be able to edit in full 4K, which I could never do before. So that's a big deal. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. You wanna to talk to me, leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching. This is the new MacBook M1. What's special about these new computers is they're now using in-house designed Apple Silicon chips, which is an ARM-based CPU code, different than any other computer that they've made since around 2005, when they made the switch from PowerPC to Intel. Now they've made the switch from Intel to their own in-house designed processors, which are based on ARM. Moving away from x86 is going to be a big deal for performance per watt and efficiency. And these are the newest generation processors that Apple has just designed specifically for their lightweight, low-end laptops. And they are kicking the butt of some higher-end computers. So I'm excited to test this out and make it my main machine.